Hello, welcome to the Golden Rock Podcast. I'm Ben. As always, I'm joined by fellow Pokemon enthusiast Connor to bring you some of the latest and greatest Pokemon news and a few laughs along the way. This week, we're discussing the recent release of Power World and what, if anything, it means for Game Freak and the future of Pokemon. As always, you can jump to a topic using the timestamps in the description below. Connor, I was going to ask you how you, you are, but I saw you in person yesterday. Literally the other day, yeah. Was it yesterday? Was it yesterday? Day before? Two. It was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. So the day before. Yes. It, yes. It, that feels like ages ago. It, time is an illusion. We learned this during yeah. COVID. Time is an illusion. It's a figment of your imagination or something like that. But, but generally the speaking, time, doing well. Thank you. <laughs> good. Good. It was absolutely fantastic to catch up with you and, of course, Luis uh, in person. That went by way too quick as well. <laughs> to yeah, the we'll, point where... <laughs> we'll have to meet up earlier next time. We will, we will. To the point where we were just sat there and then a, a woman just popped her head around and was like, uh, yeah, we, we closed at half past. <laughs> we yeah, like, we, we closed out. five oh. minutes ago. Can you leave, please? Leave? We're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess we're getting kicked out. Otherwise, we probably would have stayed there talking for hours another hour, hours. another two. It's just like, honestly, it was just fantastic chance to meet up, have that conversation. Uh, no in-person podcast this time, uh, mainly because just... It was a logistical nightmare last time, and we didn't do video then. Mm. So now it would be even more of a logistical nightmare. With all that being said, should we jump into the first question that we've had? Yes, week? let's do it. Fantastic. So Tony over on YouTube has asked, what quality of voice acting do you think Pokemon and Game Freak would agree to do if they did do voice acting? And would they allow a skip feature when they don't currently? So you said you had an answer to this before the podcast. So I'm a little bit confused by the word quality there, because you'd you'd hope, quality-wise, it's going to be great voice acting. The voice acting is always mm. going to be good. However, I did say when we had that preview for Pokemon Masters, and they gave us, um, was it Hop trying to do yeah, a British accent? Just... And I was like, I don't want it. I don't, I don't, I don't want voice acting in Pokemon ever again. <laughs> I don't think we will get full-blown voice acting in the next Pokemon game. I think we will get um, snippets. So someone will have a, hey, how's it going? Every time you talk to them. And that will be, and then you'll get the written out dialogue. I think even that gives me a sense of, you know, a little bit of that person's personality, what they sound like, the kind of tone they speak in. It gives a lot more than we get from just the dialogue box as it is. So I'd be happy with just that. I obviously want eventually full blown voice acted cutscenes, especially now that the dialogue is getting so good. I really want mm-hmm. to see it be brought to life. But if you're gonna do it, do it do it right. Agreed. I th- what you've just described is kind of how it is in Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I'd heard um, that. And you know what? That for me is enough for a, a generation or two. Honestly, I, I think that. We should have had... I, I'm i okay with not having voice acting in the 3DS games because they still had that kind of childish whimsy and charm to them. And it was on a, it was on handheld, so I was, I, you could be a bit forgiven. Now that we've moved to the Switch era and they have, as the games have gone on, they've tried to make the... They've moved away from that childish chibi sprites to, okay, we're going for full-size models and everything. It feels weird that they've tried to, you know, upgrade elements of the gameplay experience and yet they're not willing to touch voice acting. I think the reason why is probably due to time constraints, I'd imagine, and the fact that, you know... Localization would be a nightmare now that they finally got it to a point where Pokemon releases internationally all in one day. Yeah, it would would be a nightmare, which, which is why I think that Breath of the Wild style that you've just suggested is the perfect halfway house because instead of having to do every single major character's line of dialogue in their game in multiple languages ready for launch day well even before launch day because obviously you've got to get the cartridges ready it just feels a lot more manageable a lot more affordable as well because you know while you haven't got to pay a voice actor for you know hours worth of dialogue you've just got to do okay we need you to do 20 or 30 lines uh and you'll probably get the same voice actor doing multiple characters 
Um, I feel like that is the perfect halfway house. And I'd be happy with that. And like you say, it just brings out that bit of a character that you know, you know, I, because at the moment, get credit to Game Freak, they are very good that each of the characters, despite having no audio, do feel like they their dialogue is for them. Like how yep. Arvin talks is very different than Penny talks. There's very different than Amona talks. And... You know, that last piece of DLC, we spoke about there are certain moments where the voice acting would just elevate it even more. Like, looking at Kieran's dialogue, like, how amazing would some of his dialogue be, you know, during that DLC? It just feels a shame that we are missing There's that. there's There's a couple of times over the last uh, few games that I've really missed it. Um, when you're walking down Area Zero for the first time, mm. it hurts because yeah. you're trying to read what's going on. I'm not the fastest reader. So those cutscenes anyway make me suffer because everybody's just going too quick, so I miss bits. If you were reading it for me effectively, that wouldn't be an issue. Um, the other one that always sticks out to me is Pierce from Sword and Shield. Oh. When it's like, all right, we're going to do this big old rock concert. And it just goes. Yeah. It's just like. It's like, okay, come on. Black and white. We at least had P O K E. At least something. O N. Pokemon. And it's like, that's. Give me something. Anyway. Something. So talking about Breath of the Wild, I didn't bring it up. I had heard that. I've never played Breath of the Wild. The only one I've played um, recently was I played the opening of Twilight. Uh, not Twilight Princess, wrong one. Tears of the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And Zelda talks all the way through that. And I hate her so much. I because hate... Because of that old-timey high fantasy She's tried speak. for this high fantasy British-style yeah. accent, and I just do not think that actress nailed it. And it really drove me away from that character. So that's what I'm saying. Like, voice acting's... It's a double-edged sword. It, it really is something that if you're going to do it, you can't skimp on it. No, you but really... considering you already have so many voice actors lined up for your anime. Oh, yeah. Just reuse them, surely? You'd think... Uh, I mean, we're going to hire in a bunch of people to do the gym leaders and stuff anyway. And again, Masters EX has voice acting. Even if it's just for the trailers, it still has it. Mm. I don't know. I don't play Masters. It, it does very much what Breath of the Wild does. That where kind of like one line. Oh, oh, hey. It's and that's about it. But it does enough to just bring those characters to life a little bit. So the Pokemon Company has access to mm. people to do this for them. They should really just make it happen now. There's no excuse anymore. And I think that's what we're gonna come into today, uh, when we're comparing Pokemon to Power World is it's just no excuse, Game Freak. <laughs> like you need you need to keep up with the world now. Yeah, um, because yeah, we'll we'll talk more about that late later on, I think. Um, but just for the, the final point of Tony's question, would they allow a skip feature when they don't currently? I I couldn't answer that. Game Freak has a weird habit of just booking the trend when it comes to oh, all these other games do it. That doesn't mean we're doing it. Because there's like, a skip weird... cutscene. Yes. Selection. But I don't think Which, it does anything. No, because there's so few cutscenes in Pokemon games that it, like say it doesn't really do anything. Um do, what could I see them doing a skip? You know what? No, actually, I would see them going, no, you're not doing a skip dialogue feature. If they're going to put it put it in the game, I think they want to draw attention to it. And you know what? If we can't skip it in the first you no, know, let's say Gen 10 came out and was like, yeah, yeah, there's there's some form of dialogue, but you can't skip it. I think I'd be okay with that because it's a new experience for Pokemon. Of course, three years down the line when I'm still when I'm replaying that game, I think it would grind on me a little bit. So yeah. I would expect to see it in the next full release game, whatever it whatever it might be. I think you need to have it skippable. It just uh... It's such a common place within games these days to have these things skippable um, that I think it'd be ridiculous, especially if they're going to draw it out. However, as you, as you kind of mentioned, Game Freak is very much one of those of like, no, you play our games the way we want you to play them. 
We went through the effort, the, the hardship. We broke our backs giving you voice acting. You got to listen to it every time you play the game. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me. If you've got a comment or question, you can reach us by leaving a comment on our podcast on YouTube, by emailing goldenrowpod at gmail.com, by leaving gifts on our Discord channel, or by using the hashtag goldenrowpod on Twitter. Now, on to the Pal World discussion. And I'm going to start this by doing a bit of a timeline of what happened between Pal World's release and up to today. Um, just so we can kind of get everyone that's listening to this on the same wavelength of just how ridiculous this journey has been for Power World and how it went from something that was, oh, it's Pokemon with guns, to stirring up controversy, stirring up criticisms, having high highs in terms of download. It's it's what a it's just a, an amazing story to discuss. So Let's start on January the 19th, release day. Eight, hour, eight hours after release, it's already hit 1 million copies sold. And that's which is, despite the fact that it was day one available on Game Pass for free. Yeah, that's Obviously, 1 million copies sold on Steam. Yeah. Obviously, Game Pass costs money to play, um, but they... And we spoke about this when we met up. I'm not sure whether this was a tactical decision or just... Foibles happen behind the scenes, but there was an outdated version that went went up on Game Pass that some people were saying was crashing every 20 minutes or so, which is the reason why I bought it on Steam rather than just getting mm -hmm. Game Pass. I think it's why a lot of people bought it on Steam. But yes, sold. And it makes well. sense because, like, for me, I didn't have an Xbox Game Pass, and I was like, oh, I'll look into it, see how much it was. And it was about £7.99 a month. I thought, well... For three times that, I just download the game. Not even three times that, but you know, between two and three times that, I can just pay for it. I've got it on Steam forever. And let's be honest with you, it it was twenty two twenty two pounds, but twenty pound in the sale when it launched. It's in early access. Chances are that game is going to go up in price over time, possibly because More because than as they as they add more features, because the whole point of early access is. You pay it's, less for a game that is in development, that will have bugs and issues, and there's no guarantee it will hit full release. No, they, no, no. The bugs and issues are part of the final game, and you should still pay full price for it, and it's never, ever going to come down in price. The Nintendo way. No, not the Nintendo <laughs> way. <laughs> and, entertain the audience for a minute. Right. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. Uh, within hours, though, Users on X, or formerly Twitter as we have to say now, uh, had begun to post comparisons between Pal World and Pokemon, including models and heavily used term plagiarism. People posted on social media saying that Pal World is guilty of using AI to alter Pokemon designs. And I've just realized, I've been entertaining the audience and I've just kind of rambled on. Connor wasn't here. <laughs> it's all right, I'll said. catch up. <laughs> we'll catch up. Um, people were also saying, in terms of the plagiarism, that Power World uh, had ripped off designs and Pokemon had ripped off designs from Digimon and Dragon Quest. There was a whole back and forth between Pokemon fans, Nintendo fans, people that were in the middle. Just and This is within the tw first 24 hours. Everyone was using the word plagiarism. Plagiarism, not plagiarism, but yeah. Um, anyway. January the 20th, within 24 hours, it's now sold 2 million copies. January 21st, within three days, it's sold over 4 million copies. January 22nd, day four, it's now sold 5 million copies. Um, unfortunately, at this point, Pocket Pair, who is the uh, company that released Power World, uh, one of their community managers by the name of Bucky posted on social media that um, they'd received death threats since the game went live. Uh, and Pocket Pair CEO uh, Takoro Mizobi also tweeted to say that they had received death threats and hit out at slanderous comments. There's a quote here. Currently, we are receiving slanderous comments against our artists and we are seeing tweets that appear to be death also, on January 22nd, um, there was an article in uh, Automation 
uh, with an interview with Pocket Pair CEO Taku Takori Mizobi saying that Power World cleared legal reviews and then there and that there has been no action taken against it by other companies. Mizobi shared Pocket Pair's stance on the issue, stating, "We make our games very seriously, and we have absolutely no intention of infringing upon the intellectual property of other companies." And he also stated, in his personal opinion. Power World is not at all that similar to Pokemon, even citing other IPs that Power World more closely resembles. Also on January 22nd, a modder by the name of Toasted Shoes releases a mod that replaces characters and pals in Power World with Pokemon. January 23rd, modded Toasted Shoes removes the mod after legal threats issued by Nintendo. Also at this point, it sold 6 million copies uh two days quick clarification to there i don't think the yep. mod was out because mods aren't yet available for power world uh the mod workshop uh, okay. isn't oh, available the, on steam they put a video, the video up that stating that they'd made the mod which the uh creators of power world came out and said we're actually very confused how they managed to do that considering we haven't released <laughs> the mod tools which they're working towards Okay. But they did it anyway, and yeah, within a day, <laughs> Nintendo struck it down. Okay. Keep that in mind, folks. We'll come back to that. January 25th, Pokemon Companies issue issues a statement um on Power World. Um but no, sorry, the issue is statement, but it doesn't actually reference Power World. Um not by name. And not by we name. We all know what they were talking about. We do. Um, at this point, it's now sold more than 7 million copies, and there's more than 1.5 million um, current players on Steam alone. Now, we jump ahead just a little bit, because the last few days, there hasn't been that much controversy over Power World. It seems to have quietened down a bit. Anyway, January 31st, which is yesterday, is a recording this. The total number of players since release is over 19 million players. Steam has 12 million players, Xbox has 7 million players, and I think you mentioned actually it's 20, it's 20 million now, uh, isn't that's it? The, that's the headline, I think it comes into 19 million, so it's 12 million on Steam, 7 million yeah. on Xbox. Th sorry, that, I, I'm just a bit flabbergasted by that, considering Scarlet and Violet so far has sold, what, 23 million units? That's not completely up to date, I've, I think... When I searched for it, I was struggling to find up-to-date figures. That was the highest number I could find. I don't know, kind of frantically searching. 23.23 million is the most up-to-date I've got. That was from September. Okay. Can we just for a moment just look at those numbers? Because I remember when we spoke about Pal World following the trailer announcement a long time ago. It feels like a long time ago. And at the time, it felt like, oh, it's a little bit gimmicky. It will, you know, get, you know, a million or two players, and then it will just, you know, the hype will die down, the game will die off, it'll have a handful of players that continue to play it. And that might still happen. This game might just, just you know, slowly over time fall off a cliff. Especially considering but that Pocket Pair have two other games out in early access so far neither of which have ever seen the game completed. No. So we're, we're still in open territory as to what happens here. Mm -hmm. There was also, during this whole thing, a bit of controversy. A um, bit? Wow, there was a lot. <laughs> so we had accusations on um, social media. A lot of these accusations weren't actually backed up by facts and you know what for all the criticisms of twitter at least i don't know if you've noticed there are there's like now now that like addition that gets added to popular tweets of you know if someone said oh like in this case um ai ai was used in this and the tweet gets tens of thousands of of um retweets whatever it might be i saw a little pop-up that was under it and it was like this actually hasn't been verified. Yeah, it's um, Community Corrections, I believe. Yeah, I can't remember the actual name for it, but it's one of the only good things to come out of Twitter recently. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really happy to see that because yes, the the there's been many many statements come out. Uh, one that basically it plagiarizes Pokemon, which I think we'll have to come into on a broader scale in a minute. 
Yes. Uh, the idea that AI was used to create the yep. game because the uh, CEO of Pocket Pair has used Pokemon as an example in the past of how AI could be used to get around copyright. He made a tweet can about I just, it. Can I just jump in there? If you think they are the only company or CEO talking about AI, I can guarantee you 90%, if not more, of CEOs or people at top level of companies are talking about AI because it's a way If they're not, to... they'll be out of a job in two years. Yeah. It's a way to save money, build efficiencies, speed up everything. Like, at, at least this guy is being honest about it in dialogue and conversations. Yeah, there was tweets dragged up from years ago where he basically said, hey... AI art can help us get around copyright and use Pokemon as an example. Little bit of a... Doesn't look great. The no. other one is they created a game uh, about about AI art, effectively. Um, and AI art was in the game. So people who've taken these two things, the similarities the pals have to Pokemon, and say, no, it was 100% definitely they have taken Pokemon run on through an AI art machine and just creating models off that. There is no evidence to suggest that at the moment. No. The, uh, did you talk about the guy who compared the models? No, I haven't gone to that. Um, so yeah, so there was, it's the one with pre part of pre-marina. And they've got the model, and then they've compared it to one of the pals that I don't know the name of. And they are similar. They are As, similar. As a robe, I believe his name is. Okay. Now, they are similar, but, like, are they too similar? I'm I'm not sure. This is, And we'll get onto this a little bit more in a bit of, you know, some of the comparisons of, oh, this, this Pokemon design stolen from, a sh uh, from Wooloo. And it's like, yeah, but... Both of them are based on a sheep. There is only so much that you can do to them. And it's the same in some of the model situations, I think, in terms of, well, this model looks quite close to, you know, looks right. Yeah, because they're both based on oversized cats. There's only so much that you can do, unfortunately. Anyway. Uh, sorry. What I was specifically talking about was an individual who came out saying that he had compared uh, the models from Pokemon and the models from Pal World. Um, mm -hmm. including some of the models that aren't actually in the game and were only in the trailer. So that should have maybe been a tip off to us that they weren't being completely uh. honest. Um, I think I was looking into it and the, they had, when this, when this tweet went up, they had like less than a, less than 500 followers. The uh, account was like a few weeks old at most. Mm. And they basically turned around and said like, look, these models are, exactly the same the portion the proportions are exactly the same and the what they argued was that even if you had two 3d artists at the same company working off the same spec sheets modeling the same characters they would never ever have the same proportions they wouldn't yeah. they wouldn't match up this perfectly a couple of days later turned out he was lying completely and had manipulated the models to match up as perfectly as they did and got called out on it and apparently turned around and said, no, 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 no. I only did it because Pal World promotes animal cruelty. Oh, yeah, I have, yeah, I've heard about that. But yes, there are aspects of the models that are too close for comfort. Obviously, mm. people might have seen the uh, Galarian Meowth and the purple cat pal uh, that basically yeah. have the same face. Yeah. Same eyes, same mouth. It's the same face. And as you said, there's the Azurobe, which is the big snake one that people think looks like superior. It kind of does, but a snake's a snake. What are you going to do? The problem is its hair is perfectly Primarina's hair. Now it's 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 mm. it's size is slightly different, like width and girth and that kind of stuff. But uh, its flicks come off in exactly the same spot, yeah. and Primarina doesn't exactly have normal looking hair. No. So these things are still up in the air, and we are not yep. at any point going to come down today and say Power World were completely on the right. Game Freak have been robbed. 
we, we're not going to do that because we don't know, guys. <laughs> no, we don't. And the closest we got was was that statement that that came out. Um, was it? Was, did I say it was from Pokemon or was it from um, Nintendo? Uh, Pokemon Nin- Company. Yeah, Pokemon Company issued the the statement, and. Then, you know, and I started seeing the headlines and the articles of, you know, everyone exaggerating and, you know, um, Pokemon Company clamps down on Power World, but Pokemon Company goes after Power World. And, and, and it isn't doesn't feel like that. And the, the reason why is because this isn't something that has come out overnight. Yeah, a lot of people seem to think it has because they didn't see the trailers. Yes. Because people very much live in their own bubble and don't think anything they haven't seen ever existed. I've been following this game's creation for years. I didn't think it was ever going to come out. I thought there's absolutely no way I'm going to be riding around on a dragon, hanging off the feet of my bird and shooting guns, and my pets are going to have guns, and they're also going to be on this factory line building a bunch of stuff. No, it's actually, it it exists. I That's the biggest thing for me. I, I cannot believe that Power World exists. Yeah, definitely. And I think... On that point, like, if Game Freak, so Game Freak, Pokemon Company, Nintendo, these aren't small little, you know, companies. They will have a legal team of, you know, unparalleled proportions. The fact they've gone out uh, out of their way to, you know, contact someone that made a video of a mod they were producing within 24 hours, mind you, makes me think that they have for some time, kept their eye on this and gone, hmm, okay, do we need to do anything? They wouldn't wait until it goes live. They would, during that process, it wouldn't surprise me if they've reached out and gone, yeah, so you're making this, we just need to clarify a few things. And the fact that, A, it's released on Steam, which, you know, Steam has some weird games on there, so... You know, things can pop up and then later on be taken down. But the fact that it's on Xbox Game Pass, which means that it would have had to go through Xbox lawyers, Microsoft lawyers, who will have looked at this and gone, is this a bit too close and opening us up to legal ramifications? And as we said on Tuesday when we met up, if if Nintendo and the Pokemon company were going to go after them for anything, it feels like the, the name Pocket Pair... The, the company name, is probably the thing it would get them on because of that pocket element. Um, and let's be honest, I think that a lot of these Pokemon designs, uh, sorry, Power World designs, some of them that have been called out on social media are, I think, just like scraping the bottom bottom of the barrel. So like the, the, the Wulu comparison, it's based on a sheep. There's only so much you can do about it. The the one I saw was the Anubis looking one. Yep. It's like oh, it's, it's like Lucario. It's like well, yeah, but Lucario is based on, on Anubis. An ancient Anubis, like that a doesn't jackal, hold a jackal headed humanoid creature. Yeah, and it's it like, looks oh, like well, that. that. Exactly, and it's like a lot of the Pokemon designs that we know and love weren't made up from scratch. They were based on real life equivalents. Rattata, Pidgey, like you can name a hundred of them that are based on real life examples. Now, am I saying that every single Pokemon in Power World is absolutely, you know, free of criticisms? No, there are some that very much toe the line and they are very close to Pokemon. There's, there's that... a couple off the top of my head. So you've got, yep. and I will try and, where are we at? Timestamp. Uh, 29 minutes, 30 minutes in. Fantastic. Um, there is Verdash, I think, is one of the worst ones, which is the grass Cinderace. It is just a grass yeah. Cinderace. There yeah. is a unused model within the game data currently um, mm-hmm. that is just Mega Mewtwo. Who is there? Yeah, it's it's just a black Mega Mewtwo. The <gasps> uh, obviously oh, the worst yes, one. <laughs> uh, I think Nighthawk, which is one of the earliest birds you can find is kind of a mix of uh, both Star Raptor and Braviary. I think they've kind of combined mm-hmm. the two. And I think the... Oh, I can't remember. The Robin Hood-esque one 
yes. has a little bit too much of um, not Dartrix. What's his final evolution called? Decidueye. I'm going to say, d- d- yeah, Decidueye. Yeah, it's got a little bit too much Decidueye in there. Mm-hmm. The rest of them, I I think it could go either way. Are there inspirations in a lot of them? Yeah. 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 But I think that's kind of the point is the game is kind of a satirization of, yes. you know, it's it's these cutesy monsters. And we're going to take the whole like, oh, Pokemon is dog fighting. We're going to take that to the extreme and say, no, 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 no. It's now Pokemon with guns and slave labor and things like that. It's just taking it to the extreme. Would that have worked quite as well if I couldn't have looked at these creatures and gone, that's a Pikachu, that's a, yeah. that's a Pidgey, that's a Rock Ruff. And I think that's why some of the other creature capture games maybe haven't seen the success this have because they've gone, oh no, we need, we, we need to steer as far away as we can from Pokemon. And because of that, people are less likely to pick it up because po- Pokemon has that nostalgia element mm. of... You know, everyone knows at least one Pokemon that they, they can name. And I think Pal World is is part of their strategy, part of their marketing is leaned into that and gone, okay, how far can we push it without getting into legal trouble so that when people see it and they go, ha ha, it's Pokemon with guns. And that's part of the charm, part of the, I think, allure of this game that has sucked in so many people. Because if these had just been regular monsters... I don't think it would have sold as well. No. But because the, the creatures look so similar in some, some aspects and have that kind of cute charm to it in terms of, oh, that, that's, that's a really cute little pal. Wait, it's got a gun? Like That's part of the charm to it. I don't think it would have worked as well if they went for a realism aspect yeah. with a lot of these pals. But you could have had and- cute monsters without them looking... So similar. so similar to Pokemon. Because I thought this Could as well, you know, I got to a point where I was reading all these comments saying, oh, this looks like this. You know, it, it, the penguin. People were like, it's Piplup. I'm like, it's a little blue penguin, It's a, peng- it's a penguin. How, how many ways are you going to design a little blue penguin? The problem is that I then went and looked at a bunch of the other, you know, Pokemon yeah. killers that we've had over the years. Temtem, uh, Cassette Beasts, uh, Yokai Watch. I went and looked and went, well, some of these must be resembling, oh, none of these look even remotely similar to Pokemon. Like, not even does it have its own art style. It's just, even the themes don't match up. There's nothing in there where I can go, oh, yeah, that looks like a design element from this. Oh, that looks like it shared the same inspiration. Nothing. So it seems like everybody else is steered so far from Pokemon. And Pocket Pair with Power World have gone, have they flown too close to the sun? I potentially, but let's let's be honest. This game is likely to see additions in the future. Yep, and we don't know if it, you know the great thing about this being on Steam and you know completely digital is their ability to update it in the future. There's nothing stopping them once now they've got all these players. They can go you know what, one or two of these, maybe we did go a bit too far. Let's retroactively just tweak them slightly and move yeah. away from from the designs that have, have you know, caught them black. Um, I, I personally think that I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually okay with where Power World has landed. If it had gone... So I, I just don't think it, it went as far as they could have done, and I'm glad they didn't. I think that was a probably an intentional decision on their end of how far can we push the boundaries of this because and and I think that's why i'm I'm kind of okay with some of the designs being so close because it's almost you know st- satirical. Yeah. it's almost a oh no, we this wasn't by accident. We chose to do this. Yeah, there's because- a reason our mascot is a big yellow fluffy thing. Yeah. That makes you think of Pikachu. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that, unfortunately, I think that, you know, I saw, when I, when I was scrolling on Twitter, I saw some of the, the 
I don't know what word to describe them, but people that were attacking Power World simply because they perceived that Power World was attacking Pokemon. Mm. And I don't think that's what Power World is intended to do. At least it doesn't feel that way. It feels like they've... And, and I, I think that a lot of the criticisms that I saw were people that hadn't played Power World. Yeah. Because if you played Power World, you would realize that it's not Pokemon with guns. No, not in the slightest. It's, it's, it is an amalgamation of several different gaming genres, but the one that stands out is the cute monsters with guns. Yeah. But I think the, the best way I can describe it, and I have been describing it to people, is it's Ark, Survival Evolved, with cute monsters and Pokemon catching mechanics. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's as much as it draws from Pokemon, is the QC monsters and the catching mechanics. Everything else is separate. Yeah. Which I think is why, realistically, you know, we're not lawyers. Most of the people you're reading on Twitter aren't lawyers. And most of the lawyers I've watched have turned around and gone, A, this isn't legal advice, but I think they're in the clear. Yeah. I think there's enough of a difference here. And realistically, as we said earlier, there was a guy who uploaded a video. Next day, he was gone. Nintendo oh, don't it's... mess around with this. This yeah. has been on their radar. And I think... I actually, this is completely conjecture, and this is, this is my own thinking now. Or speculation, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, I think they've been contacted already. Because Agreed. there are some designs in there that we've seen changed. Um, yes. Dire Wolf, which is the one that looks kind of like Lycanroc, because it's a wolf. So just to, to confirm, is this was changed between, between the trailers trailer. and the release. Yep. So it used to have a spikier mane which made it look more like Lycan Rock. And the big Thundercat that is basically shiny Luxray. Yeah, yeah. Isn't in the game. Yep. Because I think but somebody turned around and went, no, that's, that's too close. We, you, don't, you don't get away with that one. Whether it yep. was Microsoft, whether it was Nintendo, whether it was their own legal team, because as they said, they've, they've been legally checked and said they're okay who that was by they've not come out and said but i'm sorry guys you kicking off on twitter is not going to make nintendo suddenly go what we've missed this we're yeah, going to get yes. on it right away they know they're big they boys know. they can look after themselves which we we said on tuesday which is probably what that statement was the pokemon mm -hmm. company statement was like Listen, we're not going to do anything, but we need you to know that we're aware of it just to hopefully shut down some of the conversations, some of the attacks, because let's be honest with you, I think you'd popped off earlier when, when I mentioned this, but there was death threats sent yes. to people that worked at um, Power World. And like we, like we said before, uh, it's never acceptable. If you're doing it, you, you're just a... You're the problem. You're the problem. Um, and to get this worked up over something, like, I, I and th this, th this kind of leads us on to a, a question I, I have in terms of, do we think that this game's release has any impact on Game Freak and Pokemon? Okay, so and circle, circle back to your original point there of, people doing death threats and things like that mm. i think it has a lot to do with the way we are now everything has to be you're either with me or you're against me yes which means yep. that i mean people are already going to be annoyed that we've said you know like we've played power world in case yep. in case we hadn't made that clear we, we've both put i put about 25 nearly 30 hours into it about the same about the same i enjoy the game i i think it's a fun game i think there is a lot in it to enjoy weirdly enough i think the designs are probably one of the weakest aspects of it <laughs> and i, I really agree, wish yeah. this whole controversy wasn't a thing so we could just have a fun game but i also think the controversy is what boosted it to sell so well so it, there's there's a lot going on here my point is that we don't have to live in a world where you're either with me or against me and you don't have to live on two ends, two opposite ends of the extremes. There are middle grounds, guys. It, do, do, it does mm. exist. Mm. Can like both. That's fine. Yeah. And the thing is, like, this hasn't come out at the same time as Pokemon. It scratches a different itch than Pokemon. 
it is very unlikely that this is taking anything away from people that want to buy or enjoy Pokemon. So I don't get I don't get what all the the fighting, the discourse is. I, I, d I don't get that. And I think it is because, you know, there's a subset of people that are, you know, really into Nintendo and see this as an attack on their franchise, their, you know, something that they're nostalgic about. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I think part of it is people just stirring up criticism because they find it funny or because they see it as an opportunity to grow their social media or channels or whatever it might be. And I think that's why like, I wanted to... to jump into like what we think this means for game freak because I mean, there will be like, there will be an element of people thinking oh this game's done well therefore the next pokemon game is going to be a survival shooter and that's not what i want and that's fine it's not really what i, I mean, want for pokemon no agreed i especially don't want them to basically recreate power with pokemon because i think power pushes oh. it way too far i think a lot of the yeah. uh the, the effect of slavery in it is a little uh, bit yeah it's too on yeah. the nose when you can start butchering your uh pals and things like that it's it gets grim it really does and does. you know i don't i purposely don't play that aspect of it because that's too far for me um so i don't need pokemon to adopt the non-wholesome approach that power world has taken mm. But there are elements of it that I think that Game Freak should be looking at and go, okay, this game has done well. What are we missing that this is provided? So Because it's not provided anything new, as you stated. It's not provided no. anything new. It's just an amalgamation of a bunch of stuff that's already existed. Yeah. It, it doesn't... Nothing about the game is making people people jump in and go... Oh, wow, how has no game ever done this before? Everything in this game has been done before, but it brings it together in such a way that, like, elements of it gel really well. Like, base building and getting creatures to do all that. You know, I've, I've played Minecraft, I've played some Nautica, the Far East, multiple types of those games, and you hit a point in that game where you go, I just want to use cheats now because I'm sick and tired of the... The grind. Item management and the grind. And this is a game that I haven't done that on yet because the grind is pretty much not... If you set the, the game up in a certain way, if you set up a base and the, the correct pals, it removes that grind to the point where, oh, I need to... Like last night, because I, I got the crossbow and I was like, okay, I need to craft a shed load of arrows, set up 300 arrows. I'm just going to assign one of my sheep to it. And then I wandered off and went and hunting. And when I came back, it was done. Which is that kind of village village progression is something that we saw hinted at in Legends Arceus. And I think that's where I'm going to approach a lot of the rest of this podcast from. Okay. Is I think... I don't think the mainline game should take too much from Power World. Maybe the open world and maybe some of the exploration aspects of it, but we'll come on okay. to that in a bit. Okay. I think this game should... Inv in not invite? What's the word? Inform? Should yeah, in, inform what we could see next in the next Legends okay. game. Because that's okay. the closest to it. It was a survival esque game where the Pokemon attacked you. There was no guns. Mm -hmm. The Pokemon attacked you. You had to roll and dodge and things like that. You had to craft. And there were bits where you could drop Pokemon off to improve the town. So yeah. we've seen Pokemon move in that direction, but they kind of tiptoed. Yes. This has shown me what that can do if you bring it to full fruition. Give me a reason to catch all those Psyducks because they can run my run my uh, mills to create my wheat and flour and things like that. They can run uh, my, all my plantations that I'm doing to get my berries going. You know, berries are already in the Pokemon game and we had a berry farm back in X and Y. Yeah. What if you could automate that by catching Pokemon? Hmm? There's other things in here as well. Like, I've died on the hill many times about HMs and how HMs aren't... We really should bring them back in a certain manner, but that manner shouldn't be HMs as they are. It should be a ride Pokemon, but you should have to go out and catch certain Pokemon to fulfill certain things. This game does it. it this does. game has a bunch of different rideable Pokemon. Each, oh, Sorry, mm -hmm. rideable Pals. Each one of them, you... you 
you get at a different level, you get the saddles at different levels, and they allow you to do different things. And when you get uh, your first rideable pal, I think it's a llama, and that makes exploration easier. And then you get the wolf, you get the dire howl, which makes exploration faster, which is fantastic. And it's really strong, so you can be comfortable going further. And then you get a Nighthawk, and suddenly you can fly. And that's the moment when the world opens up for you. And that's the experience I've been looking for from HMs all this time of, oh, I can now do something that wasn't available to me before. Or maybe it was, but not as easily. So it makes it worthwhile. And I went out and I hunted down specifically those flying pals for that reason. Because it's my pal that I'm flying on to achieve the thing I want to do. That's it. That's that's all yeah. I want. Give me a reason to catch Pokemon this... for a certain task that forwards my gameplay. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a couple of extra things for me that Power World does um, better than Pokemon that I would like to see implemented in Pokemon. One is the um, open world aspect. Because Scarlet and Violet's open world was very lackluster. It was too open, in my opinion, of you walk out, it's like, you can go all these different places. And it doesn't matter that your Maridon car, you know, is basic at the Maridon or Caridon is basic at this point. It, it all it can do is dash and a little bit of a jump, it can't swim. This this game does exploration in such a way that it feels like certain areas are locked off. And you don't want to go in that area because, you know, you can't make that leap. Or you don't want to go into that area because the wild pals are too strong. Or and the environment you... itself is hostile by yes. being too hot like, or too, too cold. Hot, too cold, yeah. Like, that's something that I want to see in the, in the next game. I don't want, you know, Pokemon, if it wants to stay open world, I'm okay with that. But what I want to see is them do open world correctly of... Okay, we're gonna like hide a little bit of the world via environmental hazards, which gives you the sense of progression when you do get a better ride Pokemon or you do get the right equipment to progress. Rather than what we got, which is, oh, the game's opened up because uh, you've done Mesagoza and you can explore absolutely everywhere, but there's no benefit to exploring those other areas because the Pokemon are too strong. And unlocking or, the ride functions doesn't make you explore more. It just actually makes you explore less and go straight. Yeah. 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 And that's that's one of the, my issues with, you know, the ride Pokemon in in that pre, in, in the previous generation is like, okay, you can drive faster, okay? You can now climb walls. Well, that's a bit pointless because most of the walls you don't even need to climb because you can just cycle up there a different way. Oh, you've suddenly unlocked flying. Okay, that's great, but it doesn't unlock anything new in the game. You don't see anywhere new. Whereas Power World does it a lot better of, you know, when you do start to unlock these creatures and you get to explore a lot more, the world opens up. And what I like about... And maybe maybe this is because all the pals are new in my eyes. That when you start exploring, it's like, I'm going to go over there, I'm going to go over there. And where you were originally making a beeline for one of the towers, suddenly, 20 minutes in, you're like... Oh yeah, I was said I was going to go to the tower, but I've gone off and explored this whole little like nook and cranny and found something else and seen something else. And that's something that I want Pokemon to implement of there's actually a lot to do in the game. And unfortunately, you know, the last two Pokemon games, there hasn't been a, a lot to do. There's, you know, you, there's been places that you go to to accomplish things, but there hasn't ever really been a lore to go and explore outside of Oh, I need that Pokemon to complete that Pokedex entry. I I want to be, you know, riding a Pokemon or running. Okay, I've got to make a beeline for the story elements over there. And you look to your right and you suddenly see, you know, a big mountain with a glowing rock on the top of it. And you suddenly go, oh, I wonder what, wonder what that is. And you go and explore it. One of the other things that I think I would like to see implemented, and I feel a bit sorry for Game Freak in this regard, because this might have been where they were going in the future. But for me, the Let's Go feature in Scarlet and Violet was poor. What they've implemented in Power World is superior in every single way. The fact that you are just, 
you know, you're running around, you throw out your little critter with you, your critter runs alongside you, it's dead cute because it jumps at the same time as you, so it helps to bring that kind of bond of the first time you see it jump at the same time, mine was that little fairy thing, and I'm like, oh my god, that's that's absolutely adorable. And, and then it keeps up with you? Keeps up with you, it doesn't just vanish, and the fact that, you know, when you go into a battle, it, it doesn't do what Let's Go does of they run at one another, there's a there's a bit of cloud, and then oh, it knocked out a Pokemon, or it scurried back because it was too strong. Whereas this, it's like your Pokemon or your pals, sorry, are getting involved in the battles. They are you know firing um, off attacks alongside you. Yes. And Which... each one of them has its own animation for yeah. a number of different attacks that it can learn. Yeah. And this is where Pokemon have kind of you know, what, what's the word I'm looking for? A um, bit, bit off more than they can chew in terms of Pokemon. There's thousands of moves, but it's a pain to animate all those moves for all those Pokemon, whereas Pal World has kept it quite simple of, yes, some of the pals have physical attacks, but for the most part, they are magical long-range attacks, which are easier to animate. And a lot of them are it doesn't come from a specific body part. It kind of, it just emanates from them, but it works unlike Pokemon. The thing where, is, a lot of, even the physical moves in Pokemon that are done in battle, you don't see the Pokemon make contact with each other. No, they don't. Like the move, rare the, that you do. The move animations have been something we've been complaining about for years. Because um, I was thinking, oh, what are you going to see? A uh, Hitmonlee running beside you and then just suddenly high jump kick something. But what would be the reality of that? It goes up to it, and then you see a foot over it. Why would yeah. that be so much harder to implement in the overworld than it would in a Pokemon battle? Because of the camera? Because you would have to be able to see it from every angle? But Legends Arceus let us see the battles from any angle. Mm -hmm. We could run around while the battles were happening. So what's to basically stop us from going, well... We're just going to do the Legends Arceus battles without the mechanics, obviously, without you clicking them. But the Pokemon are also going to move. Yeah. It just doesn't... It... This is what I'm saying. It's, it's one of those things of there's no excuse anymore. A team that started off with like 12 people and I think ended on 60. Yeah. Um, I think they're growing now because they've got money to. But of course. Game Freak, you have all the resources in the world. You, Pokemon has all the money. There is no mm. excuse for the quality of the games we are receiving now. Yeah, I I think Game Freak need to. I do think they need to look at Power World, but I don't. I I don't want them to take the wrong lessons. I don't want them to look out and go, "People love, love crafting. Let's let's do more crafting in the next game." What I want them to look at is is look out and go, "Okay, what did they implement in Power World?" that we could lift and implement in some way into Pokemon. You know, we've kind of discussed a, a few of those. For, you know, taking that, what I want them to do is look at this and go, okay, the Let's Go feature, how can we implement that in a better way? And it might be that, you know, while you're out and about, you can select a Pokemon, that Pokemon doesn't disappear. And when it runs up to a Pokemon, initiates a fight on its own and you know on the screen it pops up with here it's four moves each of them is combined is is key is, is set to one of your to triggers yeah so you can protect or you can attack and you can just let it go off and do its own thing and while that is happening you can be exploring the world and we kind of got that in legends arceus of that you know you don't have to stop to initiate a battle you can throw the mud you can hide you can run you can like it feels like between that and the let's go feature, they were moving towards something. And what they were moving towards, I don't know if I want or need that anymore because Pal World scratches that itch. I think Pal World isn't quite there for what I'd like to see for Pokemon. I think you just nailed it on the head yeah. where I want all four of my moves to be constantly available kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So the closest thing you get in Pal World is where you're riding one of your pals. Yes. Because you can shoot from their back, or you can use uh, their three moves that they've got yep. access to. And again, it's set to your right bumper, right trigger, or left bumper, right trigger, and your B. Which is weird key bindings. It could quite yep. easily all be on the triggers and the bumpers. 
But I think that'd be really easy to do. You know, you have your Pokemon run alongside you. You have a reticle because you can either throw Pokeballs with these reticles or you can tell your Pokemon to attack. And then it feels like I am a trainer and I'm in this world. And as you say, Legends Arceus kind of had it where it was really fun being able to throw a Pokemon out and then just pull them back. Just be like, no, we're not doing that anymore. That's it. Yeah. Retreat the Pokemon. We're running. I think that's the other thing I like about this 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 game that Powell does well or is the it feels like you and your pals are actually a team because your pals can be attacking you, you're like trying to get behind them to get a backstrike with your pal spear spear. And that's something that Legends Arceus felt like it could have done. Because it's got all the it's got that all that implemented in there. They just need to take it that next step further of making it feel like I think what I want for the next Legends game is it leans more into that kind of RPG real-time element to the point where you are using your Pokemon in battles in real time, which doesn't necessarily jump back to how it was of, okay, now there's a battle and you select to move, your opponent selects a move. Yeah, we're now playing a different game. Yeah. Which is what Legends Arcus kind of was. It was a case of there was this survivalist crafting game Mm. with Pokemon. Yeah. It yep. didn't really meld the two. And I think you're right. If there was an element, because it's really fun sometimes when I'm playing Power World to, okay, I'm surviving because my pal is drawing uh, aggro, yep. but it's now getting really weak. So I now need to swap it out for a different one, but then it's going to turn on me. So I need to make sure I dodge at the right time. And now I'm drawing fire so my pal can get behind it and do... That would be so good with Pokemon. And if you're yeah. trying to do your Pokemon's moves whilst dodging, because that's all you've got to focus on, because you don't attack Pokemon. That's not what we do in Pokemon games, and I don't need that to happen in Pokemon games. Mm. But I think if I focus on dodging and tell my Pokemon what moves to do in real time, I think we could get something fantastic out of the next game. I think you could go a little bit further with your play character. I don't need guns, I don't need weapons, but I, I could see it being like you can use items to hinder your opponent or help you. So like smoke yeah. balls, for example, lowers their accuracy, or you could throw, you know, we've already implemented mud balls and, you know, you throw a mud ball and it means that it, you're aggroing it for a split second or two so your yeah. Pokemon can get in a critical hit or something like that. Like there is so much that they could lift from Power World, these ideas, and go, okay, we're not just going to copy Power Wheel because knee robbers want that. And I don't think most people do want that. I think what they want is for the for Game Freak to kind of go, yeah, we've had this, and we've said it before, untapped potential with Pokemon. But for one of the biggest media franchises in the world, unfortunately, Pokemon games just follow the trend several years later rather than being what they should be, the forefront innovators in monster catching RPG mechanics. Which would be um, fine if they took the Apple approach and basically went, right, we're not going to release anything until years after it's already come out, but when we do, it's perfect. Yeah. It's unfortunately when it comes out, it feels like the first ever attempt at it. And <laughs> yes, it's it been does. mastered it, it, by so many other companies at this point. Yeah. Um. It, yeah, you, no, you're absolutely right. Another thing that Pal Will does that should be implemented you know what another thing that pal world does that many other games do that pokemon need to do is overworld items and i can't claim credit for this it was either you or Luis that brought this up like the fact that we still have oh, it's a shiny little sparkly thing on the ground to the point or a pokeball item to the point where a lot of the times i just pass them by now yeah. because i'm end game and scarlet and violet so i'm like what realistically is that going to be that can add any type of value to a player that has I think I have like millions of dollars at this point. I have most of the items that I need. Like it, it's busy work. Pal World. If you 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 look at the item on the ground, you know what it is. You know if it's a sphere. You know if it's a piece of wood. You know if it's you know palladium. You you just know what it is, and you can then make that decision of that's worth my time or that's not gonna that's not worth my time. Or um, I've not seen that before. Let's go find it. And yeah, you know we we spoke about the fact that you know that would make. We brought up previously about the fact of uh, in an open world game, there should be something to find within every sort of two minutes or so. Yeah. 
Now, Pokemon doesn't really have that. Um, no. And we, we said that uh, Scarlet and Violet feels sparse. And I don't think Power World is any less sparse. Like, there's a couple of, um, you know, enemy bases that you can raid, which is great fun and mm-hmm. really, really nice, really nice thing that they've added in there. Um, there's a bunch of different factions, which hints at a story within the world that's not been fully fleshed out yet, but certainly hints at it. Um, love that. But there's also things like uh, a collectible called a Lift Monk Effigy. Which uh, yeah. increases your catching prowess if you catch if you find enough of them. That's a fun little thing to find. Eggs, eggs is one of the best things I found in this game because they yeah. come in three different sizes, and I see one, I'm like, that's just potential. Every single yeah. egg is potential, so I'm gonna go out my way to get it. And they're yeah. hidden on the edges of cliffs, you know, little places where there's nothing. Not, we can't put a pal there. It doesn't make any sense. We don't really want to put an ore spot or anything like that there. Let's put an egg. Perfect. Give me something to find there. If I'm going to explore this world, give me something to find. Yeah. And I think eggs it's is it... something that Pokemon should implement. I think that I- could agreed. be really fun. Yeah, I agreed. Like the fact that you go out your way, you're exploring, you find an egg, and you could just imagine it now of, you know, there's a really rare Pokemon, you can't track it down, and then you just look at it and you see the color of the egg and you go, that's the same color as that Pokemon that I've been trying to find. And I can't find it. You get it. You nurture it. You hatch it. Oh, it's the baby form or the first form evolution of that Pokemon that I've been hunting for so long. The other thing that they could implement is that this game has, um, you find um, um, almost like diary entries when you're out and about in the wild. Why Pokemon hasn't done that with lore? I'll never know. Like, that is a way that you can easily flesh out the history of the region with very little actual work of, oh, there's pages on the ground. Again, that Legends page Arcus and it did have it with the... Oh, yes. Uh, with the tablets? Yes. Was it the, yeah. That you could... Well, you had the tablets, and then you could also find the diary of um, somebody from way back in the day who we all assume is Kogita. Oh, it was yes. like 12 or 14 pages or something like that, but you had to dig them all up. Mm. And oh, Ursa that was Luna it, was yeah. too slow, so nobody did it. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's the other thing. Like, that goes back to like th- that HM discussion that you had earlier of now there's findables in the world, but you need the right pals, or in this case, Pokemon, in order to do that. And it rewards you for, for getting those Pokemon and building a team that allows you to collect and find things. And it might just be that, you know, your your Pokemon's running alongside you, because that is one of the things that this game does really well, of the pals follow you. And it feels like you're actually a team, whereas Pokemon, it's it's never felt like you're with your team until you're actually in a battle. Yes, you can send them out in the Let's Go feature, but that just feels more of a, oh, here's something you can do, rather than you're on an adventure together. Yeah, but as we say, they don't really keep up with you. So usually if you use the Let's Go feature, it's you're sending them away and watching them do their thing until they come back, and then you run off and they get back in their vault because they can't keep up. Yeah, but this is something that they could implement of you've got your team of Pokemon, and maybe at the start it starts with, okay, you, you can have one of them running alongside you. And then as you build up the team over time, you can have your six Pokemon with you running around, exploring, and each of them might have an ability. For example, could you imagine if you had um, a Zigzagoon and it's got the pickup ability and it's just running with you and then it goes, oh, and it runs off and it comes back and it's got an item for you. Or the Ursaluna is like running alongside you and then it suddenly stops and it starts sniffing the ground and you think, Okay, there's a there's a hidden collectible here. Like there is so much that they could implement with Pokemon that I think because what I don't want is is you know they they they've got an issue now because Game Freak can't just lift stuff from Power World because then they'll draw criticism of oh you just you just copying off Power World. So I'm trying to think of ways that they can go okay Power World this how do we put our own spin on it that follows Pokemon in the formula that we're used to. I think that's why I said it should be a lot of this stuff should be implemented in a Legends game because they're yep. already working towards mm. this kind of game anyway. Yes. I think... Agreed. 
maybe not uh, base building is the wrong term, but some kind of village progression, I think, would be great. Well, that should have that should have been, like I said, that's where they were going in Legends, like the farm, for example. Mm. The farm, the farm allows you to, you know, it's one farming space. Then every now and again, you could give a Pokemon to a lot more farming space. But you should have been able to go, oh, here's more Pokemon. Let them do all the farming for me. And then I just collect the, I just reap the rewards every now and again when I come back in town. And that's what it should have been. It, it should have been that. And every it water should... Pokemon was equal to every other water Pokemon. I think I said yeah. to you, like, my farm was run by Dialga and Palkia. Because no, I thought it was funny. But <laughs> because it's a water type and something yeah. with access to ground type moves. Perfect. Yeah. Um, but they should have been, okay, if you're going to give me these Pokemon you will get the maximum amount of rewards mm. because they're that much stronger. They can water yeah. faster. They can do the ground more. I don't know what the words I'm saying, but you get it in power world where it's like, you know, there's, I think there's gathering, planting, watering, yeah. kindling, uh, mining, mining, uh, lumbering, and uh, basically Trans busy work. Transport, yeah, transport. and handy, handy work. So there's a bunch of different skills, and the stronger pals are better at them. Which yeah. means that even if you don't have a stronger pal on your team, catching that stronger pal is still useful because you get to use it in your base and make your base better. Well, it does something that, like, um, so Tomcat, I think, is the, is the one that comes out at night and it's got a level two in mining. I'm at the point now, whenever I see one of them, I catch them because level two mining allows you to them to automatically mine or level ones can't so there's a benefit for going out and catching duplicate pals whereas in pokemon games what is the benefit of catching duplicate pokemon i i there isn't really a huge amount of benefit unless outside of catching the pokedex or eventually trading them away so in legends so you can get you know those stones and stuff and you know, this, this is where I think Pokemon Pokemon Game Freak is, I think the, the I don't want to say victim of their own success. I think they, they are too eager to try new things, but then don't stick with them. Because Sword and Shield had the mechanic where you could send off so many of your Pokemon to go and do tasks. So where was the next step implementation of that? Of, okay, we did that on Sword and Shield. How can we, you know, change it up? improve it, bring quality of life features to it for the next game. I think that's the something... big problem is that, like, as you're talking about that, and I vaguely remember that, you had to send them off from the Rotom PC, right? Yes, that's right. Never did it. No, I can't a blame of, you. A bunch of the mini games that get included, I never do, because they're not they're not included in the core mechanics. They're not part of my yes, main gameplay. Exactly. Game. And yep. that's the difference that I think needs to be seen as we say like power world may be an amalgamation of a bunch of different things but each one of those things it includes you kind of have to do and each oh, one yeah. of them is enjoyable because they all add towards your progression whereas me sending my pokemon off to do tasks doesn't really do anything for me it doesn't no. implement it doesn't make my job of beating the elite four and becoming champion any easier or any better or can you stop, please? There's no need for you to squeak. Oh, You know, so <laughs> if you're going to implement these mechanics and these ideas, make them part of the core experience. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, so many times in Pokemon, it's like like that Sword and Shield thing where you, where you send them off. I think you just got XP for them. And maybe an odd item. But the odd items weren't great, and the XP was kind of like, well, I don't need the XP because these Pokemon are just sitting in the box for Pokedex completion. Yeah. So, so what's what's the benefit? Whereas legends, are, the legends games, because they are, because of the nature of them being, well, the one that we've had has been in the past. It feels like you can you can play into that a lot more, and like the base building that you've they've mentioned, all that development hub, that set set section, Pokemon can implement that in their own way because Power World is very um, selfish because you're just creating the base for you. So what I want to see in Pokemon is, you know, there's a community aspect. You're not doing this for you. You are doing this for 
the town and the town therefore rewards you for you know oh i, I, I bought you a, a, a machop to help you build new houses and then later on you come back and you find out you know it's a machoke and you turn around and go well i've got another fighting pokemon to help you out this is great and then later on you come back to the town uh only to discover oh a new shop is open that has new items available or oh well now that we've finished building the town our a chop is no longer useful we'll send it out for you to gather resources so whenever you come back to the town you know maybe someone greets you and just goes oh by the way those pokemon that you lent us well he is 20 berries he they found 20 ultra balls like you get what i mean like you could implement it in such a way where there is a base building element but pokemon's done its own spin on it mm. rather than just copying what is there um, and I think I think that community aspects are a really good way to take it as well because it's the case of like, well, no, because you're just the best at catching them, you're the best at getting all these really good strong Pokemon and getting them to behave effectively. So that's why we need you to go and find them rather than us just go out and catching our own. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I love it. I I as I say, I don't need Pokemon to be Power World. But I think there's far too much here that Pokemon should have been doing for a long time. Agreed. And there's there's one other thing quickly that I just want to touch on that is related to Power World, but it's not actually about the game. It's the honesty of the CEO and some of the comments that they've come out with. Um, so there's, there's, there's two that stand out to me. There's one where... The, <laughs> this, is, this is just hilarious. The fact that the pocket pair... Um, company felt like they needed to co come out and confirm that the game wasn't a scam and the game will definitely be released this follows another game and i can't remember what it is off the top of my head and i wish connor was here to fact check for me um there was a game that came out and then got cancelled pretty quickly um over on steam which isn't isn't very good the the other thing is that the pocket pair ceo has been very open with development issues compared to game freak and, and pokemon so there's a quote from the ceo that says the development of power world was riddled with difficulties members of the team didn't know key skills like how to build rigs to help create animation animations for the pal characters um mizobi described other work processes like file management as a mess in a particular stunning example considering the time it would take the team made the decision to migrate development from unity to un real engine when an experienced game developer a rarity on the team expressed interest in the project but only knew how to work in unreal engine uh, this decision required the team to pretty much rebuild the game so far from scratch now some of these comments are obviously you know rags to riches i can't believe this has happened to us but it's the absolute honesty of them and that is what i would like to see from pokemon like you know you only have to look at um when um Dexit happened and the lies we were fed of or oh, allow us to create better quality animation which you know i don't need every single pokemon in every single game and if i i've maintained for a while i would like to see a shorter focus like legends arceus didn't have all the pokemon i don't think it that was to its detriment no i think it was you know let's tell a concise story and that concise story means that we are going to select a handful of Pokemon that fit the region or, you know, the typings of the trainers or the gym leaders or the regions. So what I would like to see from this is Game Freak, Pokemon Company, Nintendo, being more open and honest about the development of the games, the issues with development, the, the, the things that they are doing well, and the things that they're not doing so well, because that's the that's the problem with one of the problems I think with the Pokemon Company at the moment and Game Freak is because they try to paint everything with rose tinted glasses. It means that unfortunately, when they are telling something that's the truth, you don't necessarily believe it. You think there's there's a lie behind it, or they are you know stretching the truth, whatever you want to you know describe it as. And I think. It'll be really interesting to see if following its success, if Pocket Pair's CEO is still as open and honest. See, what I find funny as well is we haven't brought it up yet, but Pocket Pair is also a Japanese company. Mm. So one of my thoughts would have been like, oh, is it a cultural thing? Is it because, you know, it, it's ja our Japanese company is more scared of like, 
um competition uh spies within businesses uh what's the word mm. i'm looking for espionage no yeah espionage yeah yeah, yeah it's some sort of espionage yeah. yeah yeah um but they're both japanese companies so it's certainly not a cultural problem it's a game freak problem yes and yeah i think yep. they could do a lot to be more open with us yeah it's it, i think it's a shame yeah, I think being more open, open and honest. And actually, one other thing that we discussed on Tuesday was the fact that the Game Freak, whether or not it's Game Freak's decision, whether or not it's coming from higher up, is the fact that they don't use... They use their own custom engine, which is fantastic in some regards because it means that you aren't susceptible to, for example, if if Unity decided to turn around and go, we're going to raise the prices. You're not... You know, you can just go, well, that's over there. We don't need to worry about that. But it comes with issues of you know if there is an issue that they can't fix they're kind of out of luck because there's no real experts that you can bring in and i think that that is again one of the things that pal world does well is you know it, it i think pal world is, is one of those um what what's the saying work smarter not harder yeah of well there's an animation for that already so why would we need to do a custom character animation when we can just nick that i say nick it not nick it as in steal it but as in uh, like acquire it <laughs> acquire it yeah acquire it and there's a bunch so, of pre-used assets as well like a lot of the trees are just yeah. unreal engine trees a lot of the mountains are unreal yeah. engine mountains like guns and things like that I'm pretty sure the game only has guns in it because they came with unreal engine as part yeah. of a pack but the game looks great for it yeah. like they've been allowed to create this at moment, it, like it's not, it doesn't blow me away. I think the draw distance is something Pokemon really need to get on board with. Agreed. Um, but there are moments where, the, like, the sun's setting and I'm riding out over the ocean and I can see the mountains in the background and everything starts coming into focus. I'm like, this is actually really pretty. Yeah. And I understand that it's running on better hardware because I'm running it on my PC, not on the Switch, but. There's been some good looking Switch games. Yep. So if what's holding Pokemon back is their engine, because they have to build it from scratch every single generation by the seams of it, it might be time to scrap it. It, it, it might be. I, I because there are like okay, so let's look at BDSP. As as panned as that was for not for playing it too much as a is a remaster rather than a remake. There is a lot of elements in that that they could probably reuse. And what I think I'd like to see is Pokemon Game Freak working smarter, not harder. Of okay, right. If we if we are absolutely beholden to this one game a year, how can we maximize um and the time we have available of, okay, if, you know, we're going to do, we've done BDSP, we're going to do the next game, but we're not going to call them remakes. We're going to call them almost like demakes of, we're just, this is just a, this is just the same game that you had on the DS, but we've made it into the modern day graphics in that kind of style. Um, and you now can play it on a modern console. And they release that once every three years in this cycle of a, of a demake, whatever you want to call it. But it usually it it takes less time to create that because they already have so many of the elements already there from the previous one. Well, that's so what the that's what the remakes always were. You know, the hmm? third third game in the in the yeah. uh, series and the remakes were all a case of like we've got this generation's engine, we know how to work in it. Let's do something good with it now that our three years is mostly taken up by trying to figure out how this freaking thing works and build it from scratch yeah. which is why you know we spoke about before heart gold soul silver was built by like 12 people because they had the diamond and pearl engine already up and running they knew how to use it and they just used it to its fullest mm -hmm. if you've I... already got something in place you can do more with it Stop building your own engine, Game Freaks. Exactly. And that's the thing about, like, if they went for Unreal Engine or Unity, and yes, there might be, okay, right, let's just nick some of those trees that are already assets. That's nothing stopping you going, okay, 
we're going to create one or two of our own trees because then it becomes unnoticeable because it's like... You don't see the, the trees the, for the forest. You don't see, yeah, <laughs> and most players, like, like those trees, like, uh, Power World has a load of different things brought in from, you know, other games. And the only thing I have noticed for me is the fact that when you glide, it is close, if not the default glide animation from Fortnite. Yeah. It looks so identical. But you know what? That's fine. You don't need to go out and create something new for everything. But you know what I haven't noticed? How crap the grass looks. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't well, be having yeah. arguments about how, why, why does the grass look terrible? And why does it pop in three foot in front of my character? Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think... I, I, I hope this is a kick up the arse for Game Freak. And I hope that from this, they... To make Pokemon they, more what it could be, not more like Power World. Spot on. Absolutely fantastic. I, I am enjoying Power World for what it is, but if a Pokemon game is released in the next couple of months, I'm still going to buy that Pokemon game because they are they are so... 95% of that of, of the, the games aren't the same. They are completely different. And Pokemon scratches a different itch than Power World. Power World is scratching that resource management, base building, exploration, team building element, most of which Pokemon doesn't do. So when Pokemon comes back around, I, I want the next Pokemon game. But I want to see improvements. I don't want to see, you know, the next game, if it's a Legends game. I, what I don't want to see is them go, here's a new Legends game. Um, all those things that you liked in the previous game, yeah, we dropped them. And we're trying these new things. What I want them to go is go, Legends Arceus, we've listened to your feedback, we've looked at the game, and this is how we're going to improve on so many of those elements to deliver an even better Pokemon experience. And the more I think about it, the more I want le the Legends games and the Pokemon games to veer off yeah. and do two different things. I want them to fulfill different niches. I think I want, I'm want. i happy with Pokemon, the mainline games, being more like Scarlet and Violet. And if that means that we don't get the, you know, the Legends Arceus catching mechanics, which I really enjoyed, I'm actually okay with that thinking about it now. As because... long as they improve the open world. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I... Yeah, I, I just want them to look at this and go, okay, we, we need to figure out how this cycle that we've got, we can make it work for us. We can make it so we, we improve the games despite the limitations, but then also how each of those three games, so a remake, a Legends, and a mainline game, how they are all... They all have that connecting thread of their Pokemon, but I'm okay with them all doing different different things. Yeah. I so I was was that what you were expecting from this podcast? Let us know. Be yeah, nice about it. Yeah, please do. Yeah, please please be nice about it. I think people will be interested. I I cuz like yeah, like like I said before we started recording, I really wanted to discuss Power World, but I didn't want it to just be Power World even though we are enjoying it. Like it it does have an impact on Pokémon or it has the potential to have an impact on Pokemon. Um, but it's over to Game Freak. I mean, we'll... Uh, I was going to say we'll know more in February because we get it. Well, later this month because we I are getting... I hope not. I really yeah, I hope they that. don't try and divert last second yeah. to adjust to this new game. If Agreed. they're going to do it, they need to do it from the ground up. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think... I. There's a difference between I hope and I don't think. I hope we don't see anything Power World inspired, shall we say. Um, it's an inspiration of an inspiration. This, this, this Gaming has just become an Ouroboros it's, of it's ideas. It's just a circle, isn't it? It's yeah. just a circle. <laughs> I, I, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to see anything from this in the next Pokemon game because they will have shoved it in last second. Yeah, and what I also don't want to see is... Um, I, don't, I think it's... <laughs> If we are getting a Pokemon game announced this this month for a November release date, I'd imagine that 
there maybe isn't enough time to implement a lot of the things that they could potentially implement. What I worry about is that what they can change is the trailer and go, okay, scrap the trailer we've done. Let's make the trailer more similar to what the Power Wheel trailers was and what people want from the Power And that's what I don't want because that to me is almost... Because that worked so the... well for them in the past when they were doing Legends exactly. Breath of the Wild. Yeah, and Scarlet and Violet, where it made it look like, oh, look at all these Pokemon just interacting and being alive in the world. That's something that Power World does that Pokemon still doesn't do. I have come yeah. across big, you get the big grass mammoths, right? That yes. are too strong for you to fight on your own. Mm -hmm. The amount of times I've come across them fighting each other, stuck around, hidden yeah. in the grass, yeah. and waiting for one of them to die and the other one to be on a tiny amount of health, yeah. and then throwing a ball at it. That's all I want. Pokemon, make your Pokemon fight in the wild. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And no, it's fine. And the 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 that's something else that you can do in Legends of in Power World. Sometimes you come across the hunters or the liberation power liberation whatever they are battling pals. Now, there's nothing stopping you getting to an area in Legends if they have that real time RPG mechanic of you get there and it's like oh there's Team Galactic's precursor battling wild Pokemon. Okay, am I going to? sit back and see what happens. Am I going to get involved and protect the Pokemon? Like, Am I going like to this... get involved and protect the people? Yeah. Like, this... 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 <sighs> Game Freak, come on. <laughs> just, just, honestly, <laughs> just come on! I, I just, I'm just frustrated, I think, at, at this point, because I've... I feel... I feel like I'm setting myself up for disappointment again with Pokemon this year already. We're only in January. I'm, Doesn't matter. I'm, Power World is a great roadmap ahead of it. So, yeah, yeah. And as I've said before, like Pokemon is a live service, live service game. As much as it would frustrate me of, you know, a new region's just unlocked. Pay four ninety nine for a new T shirt. Like Pokemon would actually work with that really well. Of a live service game of he's a region. Next year, here's another region with loads of new Pokemon to come back and explore. And I don't want it to see it that way, but it just feels weird that they haven't gone down that route because it feels like such an easy win for, you know, games as a service. And, oh, you ran out of Pokeballs? I just pay nine ninety nine for 100 Ultra Balls. Like, that just seems like it's something they could do. Oh, Connie, <laughs> anything else you want to add before we wrap up this podcast? No, I think I covered the vast majority of what I wanted to say. Me too, me too, and had an absolute blast. I'm going to plug something, though. If you haven't already, go over to my YouTube channel and go watch my latest Then We Fight video. The fact that it's nearly at 2,000 views in less than a week is a little bit mind-blowing. Uh, so yeah, go go ahead, show it some love. Let's see if we can get spiking again and over on the YouTube page your YouTube front page, whatever it might be. Um, that's the show for this week. If you've gone this far, you're just a top dollar, aren't you? Before we go, as always, we'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like if you're watching on YouTube or leave a review, ideally a five-star review, on the podcast, podcast platform of your choice, as of course, it really helps the podcast out. Connor, where can we find you? You can find me on my YouTube channel at Captain Fidget or on Twitter at Cap Fidget. I'm Ben. You can find me as Professor Hoeing Gaming on YouTube and Professor Hoeing on Twitter. We'll be back next Friday for another week of Pokemon Podcast content. See ya!